Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the morning show, broadcasting on Channel 9 and also on WJOPLP Noob Report, Joppa Radio, FM 96.3. We're also coming to you on Noob Report Community Media's YouTube channel. Just go to www.ncmhub.org, click on YouTube, uh, and uh, go to the YouTube icon. So I'm your host, Mary Jacobson, and I am very excited to welcome today's guests on a show that I think will be engaging and a lot of fun. I'm happy to welcome Knock Middle School teacher, Eric Schilge. Um, and the other teacher who was supposed to be here is Jennifer Groskin, who unfortunately will not be able to join us today. Uh, they're here with some of the eighth grade students who are enrolled in an innovative interdisciplinary program that was featured in the Daily News recently, and it totally captivated my attention because it focuses on learning to listen as a means of interviewing for understanding and for impact. So first of all, Eric, let me welcome you and say thank you very much for coming to the morning show and for recruiting these eighth grade students to come with you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us, Mary. It is so exciting for you and for the community to get a glimpse into what's happening in the schools. It's obviously been a challenge with the pandemic, but I'm really proud of what we've accomplished um, with my colleague, Jen, and uh, with everybody here at the NOC, and especially with these incredible students. So uh, in the face of great obstacles, I feel like we've really um, been creative and innovative and accomplished quite a bit. I'll say, um, I was just saying as we were chatting a little bit before we uh, began uh, this program, that I am super impressed with all the teachers and all the students throughout Newburyport for being so resilient, um, for adapting and doing what you needed to do under these really extraordinary circumstances. I, I think it's amazing what you've uh, been able to pull off. So at this point, I'd like to um, introduce the eighth graders who are here. Uh, so let's just go around and if you could just uh, wave and say hi and your full name, Sophie. Hi, I'm Sophie Lavalley. I'm one of Mr. Shilga's students at the NOC. Thank you, Sophie. And Lucy? Hi, I'm Lucy, and I'm also one of Mr. Shilga's students at the NOC. Wonderful. Thank you. Isla? Hi, I'm Isla DeVivo, and I'm one of Mrs. Groskin's students at the NOC. Wonderful. Thank you. Maya? Hi, I'm Maya Rosa. I'm also one of Ms. Groskin's students at the NOC. Wonderful. Brian? Hi, I'm Brian Lucy, and I'm one of Mrs. Agostin's students. Great. And Quinn? Hello, I'm Quinn Donovan, and I'm also one of Mrs. Groskin's uh, students. Thank you all so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Well, as, as I mentioned, I, I just love the idea of this interdisciplinary program focusing on learning about interviewing and pairing that with listening skills. We, you know, we all live in an era when it's said very often that we've just forgotten how to listen to one another. Um, so we too often wind up at best talking past one another and at worst just yelling at one another or just stopping to even try and communicate. Um, but when that happens, my sense is that we diminish the range of the relationships that are available to us. And also we diminish the inclusiveness and the texture and the compassion and understanding of our communities. So I am eager to learn more about the program that you've been uh, engaging in, the fundamentals of listening and interviewing from the teachers and from all of you students. So let's start with your teacher, one of your teachers, Eric. I wonder if you could tell us about how the idea for this interdisciplinary program came about and what you see as its overarching purpose. Well, first off, I would say that it really could only come about in an environment where there is this really highly collaborative and collegial culture. So from the top with our principal and superintendent, uh, Lisa Furlong and Sean Gallagher, there's this real encouragement here at the NOC for teachers to be working closely with one another across disciplines and across the eighth grade teams. So that's number one. You have to have yeah. the raw material to really bring an interdisciplinary and uh, collaborative program like this to life. And then there's also at the NOC and here at Newburyport Public Schools, a real emphasis on ongoing learning and professional development. Mm -hmm. So this summer, uh, we had to do a lot of prep work for this new um, pandemic response hybrid learning model. And so one of the things that the school invested in was a collaboration with a group called Essential Partners. And oh. Essential Partners is an organization that focuses on fostering healthy dialogue um, across lines of difference, both in schools and among adults and in communities. 
So um, we, Ms. Grosk and myself, Mr. Boudreau and, um, and the rest of the ELA team, as well as high school teachers um, up at Newburyport High School, we met over the summer for 16 hours of professional development on Zoom in how to facilitate what they call the dialogic classroom. Hmm. So essential partners trained us in a whole range of the skills that really address exactly the words that you were using to describe the importance of listening and asking genuine questions and not talking past one another to get to kind of like the texture of the human experience. So a lot of the stuff kind of floated up in the atmosphere as, as a sort of like uh, almost like a little bit hard to like grasp onto. It wasn't the nitty gritty technical stuff that a lot of teachers are accustomed to when it comes to their planning, but it really helped sort of steep us in the mentality and philosophy that we then were able to apply to all sorts of parts of our curriculum. So you'll hear from the students today that this sort of approach to listening and asking questions has spanned many of the different assignments and learning activities that they've had an opportunity to participate in. But it all started really this summer with those 16 hours of professional development with essential partners. That sounds wonderful, Eric, a really a holistic approach um, to integrating these skills across the curriculum. Um, and, and it also sounds like you put in a lot of work <laughs> on it over the summer, so that's really great. I'm curious to find out, uh, are, are the goals for this particular interdisciplinary program that, that you and, and, and Jennifer uh, engaged in, were the goals uh, the same or, or different for, like you teach English language arts and Jennifer teaches social studies, were they the same or different? And if they were different, how were they different? Well, I think that uh, when it comes to social studies, there's a real emphasis in the curriculum on civic action. Mm -hmm. So helping students sort of conceive of themselves as active and impactful members of their community mm -hmm. and giving them the tools to take action to sort of integrate and improve the lives of the people that they live with here in the Newburyport yeah. and sort of at both a local level, the state level and the national level. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the tools that we learned when it came to how to listen and ask good questions are really useful for starting that sort of civic action project like the the IMWE project they work on in social studies. Mm -hmm. In ELA, what we're discovering is the capacity to listen to the full spectrum of a person's experience and then ask genuine questions of understanding. That's not just useful for when you're talking person to person. It's also really useful when it comes to engaging a text, reading something yeah. like a story. Um, so one thing that we've been doing is taking this full spectrum listening approach where instead of just sort of sitting back and letting somebody's ideas wash over you, you listen when they're talking specifically for their values, their actions and their emotions and kind of separate it like light separates in a prism mm. that when you do that with a text, you discover all of these really fascinating things about a character. And one of the things the students are working on now in ELA is writing profiles. They're writing profiles as if they were magazine writers, but they're writing those profiles about the characters from the short stories that they've read. And we had the chance to uh, have a, uh, several guest speakers in one of whom was uh, Gia Tolentino, a staff writer for The New Yorker. And when she heard about this approach, the full spectrum listening for values, actions, and emotions, she was so impressed. She said she's gonna use that technique <laughs> when she interviews the next subject of one of her profiles for The New Yorker. So you can see how when you take that sort of uh, full spectrum approach, you can apply it to so many different areas of our students' lives. Well, I love that phrase, full spectrum, and I like the way you describe it as a prism, um, which of course separates um, you know, light into different discernible colors and, and, and strands. And it just sounds like a much more engaged way of, of interacting with a person or a text. And so I, I'm, I'm keen to learn more. Uh, so let's dig in. Tell us how you prepared uh, for the interviews. Um, what were some of the skills of listening that you studied or practiced ahead of time? And, and, and I think that Eric, if you wanna say something about that, that's fine. Or, or we, can, uh, we can invite any of the students to talk about how you prepared um, for the interviews that you were conducting. I think that would be an awesome question to put to the students. I'd love to hear what they think about how they prepared to uh, engage with some of our guest speakers and ask them questions. So let, let's hear it. Okay, who would like to begin? Any I volunteer? Thank you, Maya. Um, so normally um, the day before we um, visit the speakers, we're given a packet, either like a few page packet or it's online. And mm -hmm. then the speakers submit a identity wheel for us to look at and we mm -hmm. can learn a little bit about them before they speak to us and we formulate two questions and write them down on the packet 
and then um, the day of the speakers were given um, a specific thing to listen for, either values, emotions, or actions, and then we basically just listen, and at the end we formulate two more questions. So there's a real careful preparation, in other words, for the interviews, which is kind of a learning experience in itself when you think about how often uh, we don't prepare <laughs> for an interview with somebody. So um, thank you for that, Maya. Anybody, any of the other students like to um, add anything about how you prepared? Um, I would like to say that um, when we look at the identity wheels, it's really nice because we can like learn about the background of the person that we're interviewing yeah. and it really helps us get an idea of what we're going into when we start the interview and it really helps the questions because um, we can base on their identity and connect what they value by looking at the chart and I think it helps us ask really good questions that help us um, like learn more about the person. Yeah. Well, I'm curious to find out from the students, how did this uh, process that you went to, how did it change your idea or your preconceptions about what it means to actually listen to somebody? Um, I can answer this one. I think that my response to this varies in the sense that a lot of people would just consider listening as just, you know, sitting back, like Mr. Shulga said, using yeah. your ears to listen to what they have to say and stuff. But by using the sheet and stuff that's asking us to formulate these questions and then learn more about them and take down actions or emotions or values or what they're saying, I think that helps a lot of understanding, like really being able to comprehend and understand what the person's saying. And so I think that makes a huge difference. And also, when we do our reflection after you're asked what connect or what did you connect to with that speaker and stuff like that and being able to take down the notes and really understand and be able to comprehend what they're saying makes a huge difference and that makes it much easier. So well, that's really interesting because I, I know the, what you focused on was what um, what your teacher also talked about that often what we do is just let information or text wash over us and what you're all describing is a very different much more active and engaged process um, which means of course the more we engage the more we'll learn from the get-go um, so um, well I have another more questions of course but was there anything any of the others of you wanted to add about your prep or how it changed your idea about what it means to listen before we go forward um, I would like to add that um, I feel like at the beginning, like um, they were both saying, that it kind of goes in one ear past out the other. You're not really grasping <laughs> what they're saying. But towards the end, um, like I feel like I was more connecting and comparing like my own perspectives and opinions with theirs, along with like what they value. And I think that really helped me get a deeper like understanding of what they were actually saying and like connecting with it. Well, wow, that's really interesting, Lucy. Um, the way I would put that is it sounds like there were layers of learning um, that included learning about yourself um, from listening to somebody else, which is really, uh, I think, a powerful idea. And I've no doubt, Eric, that's probably part of what you had in mind. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> we talk a lot in um, teaching about giving students both uh, windows and mirrors, right? So yeah. the texts that we read, the activities and things that we do in the classroom, they should give students a window to look through to the wider world. Uh, and also a mirror to look back and examine themselves. And then we also sometimes talk about sliding glass doors, right? A uh -huh. way to open the door and walk through. And so when you're talking to a professional journalist or a Pulitzer Prize winner or a local politician or somebody who's taken action in their community to change something, that's a door because you can see now a connection between your work at the desk in front of you in the classroom or at home uh, and then a connection to your future and your opportunities before you to sort of start to make a difference in your community. Yeah. Yeah, great metaphors all, um, and I love the sliding doors. <laughs> um, well, all right, I'd love to learn more about um, some of the interviews that you conducted. Who did you talk to, and, and how did you apply your listening skills? I'm hoping that you could give us some examples of some of the interviews that you conducted and what you learned. Anybody like to, um, anybody like to begin? I could begin. Okay, Lucy, and then um, Quinn. So my interviewed was Lindsay Haight, who is the executive director of our neighbor's table, and I think she's really done a lot for the community. And I applied my listening skills in a lot of different ways, but something that I like really was drawn to is how she was like really values and thinks that um, like hunger is important, not only in our oh. community, but also worldwide. And I think that this is like a perspective that we share. So that's one way I um, could like get a deeper like understanding because I was able to like connect with her like right off the yeah. bat I was, thought that was like, <laughs> like 
Well, th thanks, Lucy. It sounds like it was a really personally meaningful um, interview that you were able to conduct. Um, so thank you for that. Quinn, how about you? I think you had your hand up before. Yeah. So I listened to Mrs. Riccio, who is the head of nurses at Newport Schools. And like, I really learned a lot about her background, like who she was, and not just about her being a nurse. Like, for example, she talked about her family and also playing basketball for, in, for a pro league in Europe which oh. I thought was really interesting. That does sound really interesting. And so what I pull from that is sometimes you learn things when you're listening well that you might not have expected or known that expand your picture of who somebody is. A fuller picture, I guess, would be one way to put it, uh, of their identity. Um, anybody else want to give an example of somebody you talked to and, and, and what you learned from your ability um, to listen? So yeah, please. I have one. I think my favorite speaker I listened to is Rebecca Tracer. Um, she was my last one I listened to. She was a political journalist and a writer. And I really felt that I connected with her on multiple levels, one of which being that when she started off as a writer, she mentioned multiple times that um, she couldn't see herself as a writer and didn't really enjoy writing as much as she did now and didn't have as much of a passion for it. And that relates to me in like a sports category. I The, so the sport that I play now is softball. You know, it just like connects on a personal level as well, just because I've grown so much and she's grown so much as well of her not necessarily enjoying what she was doing like I did not like softball when I first started playing and now I've grown to be this huge player and love it and I have such a passion for it and her as a writer <laughs> journalist connected to that and I felt. Uh -huh. Well that's wonderful I can hear also in how you talk about it your enthusiasm <laughs> which is wonderful to hear and also what it meant to you personally uh, so that's just great. Um, Isla, Maya or Brian um, any examples that any of you would like to share with us? I can talk about once I went to a speaker called Gia Tolentino, mm -hmm. and she's actually written for the New Yorker, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah. So she's been really interested in writing. I think that also I have been. I really like writing, and I think it's just really interesting, her whole journey to becoming a writer for the New Yorker, because she's been through a lot. She used to just write for, like, freelance, like, online gigs and I think that was really interesting to hear about her journey to become this big awesome writer. Absolutely and, and, and you know it's a big deal to be a writer for that that journal <laughs> and and how um, inspiring it occurs to me it would be uh, to learn about the struggles that somebody has before they wind up um, at that level of success. Um, at least I would find it inspiring anyway. So that sounds like a, a really also personally meaningful uh, interview that you had. Uh, Maya or Brian, examples either of you would like to share? Yeah, I can go. Um, so one of the speakers I listened to was Andrea Egmont, and she is the director of New Report Youth Services. And I chose to um, visit her because I've been to New Report Youth Services before, and I think it's really fun. And she told us about how she had got into the her position. She came to New Report without a real job in mind, and she went to the city, and they gave her this job with no real instructions. So she just got to form it off her own ideas. <laughs> and I kind of connected with a lot of her interest in like ways to look at life. She really likes like kids, and I love babysitting. And she all she like thinks that like traveling is like more fun than just getting a gift on Christmas. She's like, yeah, just I like her morals and her values. And, and um, she shared with us like all the different things she's done with New Report Youth Services and just, I just really connected with her. Well, that sounds really great. And what a, what a great story. Somebody who, um, you know, found their way in life uh, simply by knowing what was important to her and by asking for a job. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so that's great. Thank you for sharing that, Maya. Uh, Brian, is there any interview that you had that you'd like to share? Um, my favorite one was JC and Casey. Um, I mean, Jason and Casey. I forget their last names, but they made inclusion playgrounds for uh, the community of New Report. Oh. And I thought that was really important um, because based on the time that we're in, like, it's important to include people. And I think it's very, like, they talked about, like, life skills and how to deal with adversity because they both have children with disabilities and they had no clue where to start. And so they started making fundraisers and playgrounds so that everybody could use them. 
Well, that sounds great. And, and yes, I, 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 I've, I've read about the inclusive playgrounds that they started here in Newburyport, including one at, uh, at the Frog Pond at Bartlett Mall. And it's so important to enable everybody to feel included. So that sounds like a great, it's, you all had great interviews and you all found them to be meaningful in different ways. And I think it's because of the way that you listened. Uh, so, um, so let me let me learn a little bit more then about how um, you use these interviews then, uh, because I know part of the goal, um, as you uh, spoke about earlier, Eric, was to utilize these interviews then in different ways, both for your English language arts um, in terms of developing character profiles and engaging the text in an active way, and also then in your um, civic action projects. So um, maybe we could start with the English language arts. Um, would some of you be willing to talk about how you wound up then using the inner that you conducted um, in the context of your language arts class assignment to profile characters? That's a really good question. And just as a frame for some of the students to think about, um, some of the people that we were, had a chance to interview and speak to are actual journalists who write profiles themselves, like Rebecca Traster, Gia Tolentino, um, Emily Nussbaum, Shira Springer, and some of the other people that we interviewed are uh, active in other ways in their community. Um, but in, in every case, the preparation work we did and the work we did around listening, the values, action, emotions, perhaps you could share a little bit about how you've used that framework around values and actions and emotions to approach your character profiles that you're writing for ELA. So as much as we're using this dialogue and um, asking each other questions and asking these um, activists and journalists and writers um, everything that we've been doing for the speaker series and during our previous weeks, I think that using it in not only um, our classes of social studies in ELA, I think we've been using it in science to be presenting ideas about like carbon emissions, climate change and stuff like that. Yeah. And it has helped us a lot to be able to talk to each other and use our comprehension questions and being able to listen to each other better. Um, so I think that in result of us having these speaker weeks and you know being able to interview all these people, it's also helped us being able to um, you know do, use our even make our writing better and stuff like that. And for our profile mm -hmm. that we're doing in ELA, we're having to interview each other on Friday, I think, which Mr. Shilga mm -hmm. said, we're going to interview each other as our characters that we're portraying in our profiles. And so I think oh. this would be a huge asset to, um, well, our speaker weeks could have been a huge asset to being able to complete that the best we can, listening and asking questions and stuff like that. Wow, that sounds um, really interesting and like, um, a way to really get into a character, to have to have a dialogue as that character and to utilize that in your profiles. Uh, are any of the other English language arts students, are you willing to talk about perhaps a character that you profiled and who the character was or, or what book they came from? Um, Hi, I listened to Emily Nussbaum a few, I, oh, sorry. I listened to Emily Nussbaum and she's actually a journalist but I thought it was really interesting all of the things she talked about while being a journalist and writing these reviews of people and um, profiles. I think it was just really interesting how she talked about she always had to have a balance of criticism while listening to someone and reading their work and watching videos or anything that she is profiling. But I think it's just really interesting her style of writing and different styles that she uses for different people and how she makes sure she doesn't use too much criticism, but she still gives an honest review. And I think just having that balance is really interesting and really, it could be very useful in ELA class. And Isla, who are you uh, going to profile? Which character from the short stories? I'm doing the narrator from the White Umbrella. Hmm. Have you thought a little bit about how um, you're going to approach telling her story and what aspects of her values, emotions, um, or actions are gonna be relevant in the story that you tell about her because you'll have to do something similar to Emily Nussbaum in terms of sort of evaluating and judging some of the stories she tells about herself in that story. Yeah, I think that Emily Nussbaum, what she talked about really helped, especially with listening to different aspects of the story. And I think that can be really helpful when I'm doing the profile for the narrator. That's awesome. Well, thank yeah, it is, and and thank you, and I love that idea of the balance, um, uh, creating that kind of uh, a balanced lens to look at a human being through. Um, that sounds very powerful um, and challenging. Um, so, well, all right, I know that um, um, 
you know, some of you are in the social studies uh, class uh, with, uh, with uh, Jennifer Groskin. And I wonder if some of you would be willing to talk about how you use your um, listening and interviewing fundamentals um, to complete your, I think it's called the I Am We uh, project. Um, would some of you be willing to talk about how, uh, how, what kind of project you're doing and how these interviewing skills uh, are being utilized in that? I can start. Great. Um, so I think the skills that we're learning from speaker series are being utilized in the IME project because we have to get involved in our community um, to try to like make something better that is not in a great position right now. Um, so, but we have to interview someone that we think can maybe help us with the project. So I think by listening to all these speakers and interviewing them, we're learning like the skills that we can use to interview the people um, involved with the community for our IME projects. Mm -hmm. And do you, have you decided on what your project will be yet, Maya? I have. I'm um, going to try to get some restaurants to switch from plastic takeout containers to cardboard takeout containers to reduce waste. Bless you. <laughs> That's so important. <laughs> you know, whenever you see those pictures of the trash in the ocean, it just, oh, it breaks your heart. Uh, so that's a great project. And I can hear that you're already making plans for using your interviewing skills to um, help you along with that. Uh, uh, let's see, how about uh, another um, social studies pro I Am We project? Anybody else want to talk about? Uh, Quinn, is your hand up there? Yeah. So. It also just helped me for like picking a topic because like when I was reading different things that or different like passages about the topics, try to see which one I should pick. It helped me focus on like the key details and all of those, like in the most important things of all of those, which was really helpful because of the speaker series. And Quinn, do you know what project you're going to be uh, you, working on? Uh, not really yet, but I have one that I trying to do is uh, college athletes getting them to get paid or having them get wow. paid because right now they're not even allowed to have any endorsements. Well, that sounds like a fascinating uh, project, Quinn, because they bring in a ton of money <laughs> for their schools, just a ton of money. And, yeah. uh, and you know, it just doesn't seem, uh, talk about balance, it doesn't seem balanced or fair. <laughs> you know, they put in a lot of time and energy and heart. So that should be, a, well, um, you know, good luck with whatever project, but that sounds like a really interesting one if you do wind up focusing on that. Anybody else want to talk about your project? Uh, uh, I can go. Wait, um, Ryan. Okay, so I think that the speaker series helps us with talking to like people who we don't normally like would talk to. So it like steps us outside our comfort zone, I think. And so that's, I think, going to help us later on in life. And it helps us with the I and we because we're going to interview people we don't know. So I think that's great. One yeah. of the things that we talked about after the 2020 election on November 4th. Uh, was the importance of asking questions like the ones Brian just described um, and how you have to sort of take stock of the time and place, the context in which a conversation is happening. And we made a distinction between the types of questions that we ask with an intention of persuading someone versus mm. the types of questions that we ask with the intention of genuinely understanding them. And we asked the students, well, what types of questions will be uh, would you want to ask immediately after an election? Should you be going into conversations with people about politics trying to persuade them? Or should you be looking to understand them and build some sense of uh, genuine curiosity in the questions that you ask? Mm -hmm. And so I think that embarking on these projects, some of which inspire quite fierce debates like uh, paying mm -hmm. college athletes, for yeah. example, you'd want to be careful or at least thoughtful, I guess, about the types of questions you're going to ask the people who are you know, related or in some way impacted by your project. So I'm excited to see how Quinn and Brian, Maya, Isla, Sophie, Lucy, and how everybody uses that skill of how to sort of consider time and place in the questions that you ask um, to really start to engage the project in a way that sort of builds momentum and is constructive and healthy. Because um, some of these, you know, they could be a challenge and you'd have to have yeah. a lot of courage and insight to, to start them. Ab absolutely. And what a useful distinction because they are different kinds of questions, aren't they? Questions that are aimed at understanding, questions that are aimed at persuading. Um, and in theory, you know, the questions for understanding 
arguably should come first, even if you want to persuade somebody, because <laughs> you'll probably be much more effective at persuading them if you understand them and their point of view first. Um, well, does anybody else have a project that they wanted to talk about or a character profile before we move on to the next topic? Um, I just wanted to say that I think it's really interesting learning about asking good questions in these learning about other people, because I think making sure that you're asking good questions that aren't just a yes or no answer and asking yeah. questions that would really connect to their values, emotions, and actions is really important. And I think that could really help in our, our I am we interviews because asking good questions are, is really important about learning more about people. Yeah, it, that's an excellent point, Isla. Plus, you know, if you figure out how to answer questions that people can't answer with just a yes or a no, you're going to draw them out more and you intrinsically will just learn more about them. And also it's so much easier to continue um, a question and answer and turn it into a dialogue. Um, you know, when you are drawing things out of people, um, you can keep going because each answer they give you gives you something to build on and use the listening skills that you've all been describing to keep it going. Well, so what I also wanted to ask all of you, because you, you have been engaged in listening and interviewing, I'm curious to find out if, uh, if some of you have found yourselves applying these skills outside of your classroom context with your family or your friends or other situations. And if you have been, how have you been doing that? What difference has it made for you? Anybody want to take that on? So I definitely think I use these skills outside of ELA class because when you're trying to build relationships with people, like not only your family and friends, but people you don't even know that well, like along with people you know well, um, I think it really helps because if you use your full spectrum listening, then you can really get to know the person on a deeper level and you can connect with them in other ways. And I think that this is like listening is a- You cut out again, Lucy. But I think that what Lucy but just said is perfect, uh, right? Yeah. Lucy, I, I think that uh, rather than try and, and have you fade out again, you, you, your, the idea you gave us was full and rich about how listening skills enrich a conversation. Um, so thank you for that. That was great. Um, and again, we'll edit it so, um, so, um, so we get the, the gist of your answer. Anybody else find that you've been using these listening skills outside of school? And if so, I'd love to hear about it. Yeah, I think even with Lucy and I, I mean, Lucy and I are really good friends, right? But we do have our differences. And so whenever either of us argue about something random, it's like you have to make sure you're using full spectrum listening so you can see the other person's point of view, because that does happen. We'll like argue about random stuff, but then it's like at the same time, even though you want to get your point across, like it's good to just be able to listen to each other and ask like probing questions and stuff like that. And I think that helps a lot. Yeah, thanks, Sophie. I, I, I agree. I think one of the benefits of really listening is that if you listen, you don't quickly react to something that somebody said. Um, and that's where a lot of mischief in relationships comes from, those quick reactions where we assume they meant something they might not have meant. So if you're determined to use, and again, I love the phrase full spectrum listening, you're more likely to say, wait a minute, what did you just say? Or what did you mean by that? And and, uh, and many relationship, I think, has been saved by that pause to listen. Anybody else want to talk about ways you found to use your listening skills outside of school? Yeah, well, so, for example, on Thanksgiving, um, I saw a bunch of my cousins and uncles and some of my grandparents that I haven't seen in a really long time. So I, I, like list, I, I listened much more like thoughtfully about what they were saying than I would have before the speaker series and also asked much more thoughtful questions and much better questions to them, which was really helpful because of the speaker series. And that sounds really important, Quinn. And, and, and I can only imagine that it must have made for a, a perhaps a calmer and a more peaceful, uh, more engaging holiday with your family for you. So thank you for that. Well, I have one final question for all of you, because now that you've developed some expertise in listening and interviewing, I'd love to find out from each of you who your dream interview would be. <laughs> if you could interview anybody that you want, and Eric, we'll start with you. <laughs> if you could interview anybody, <laughs> you know, near or far, famous or not so famous, uh, who would you love to be able to use your listening and interviewing skills for? 
Well, first off, I just wanted to say that my heart is so full listening to my students' answers about how they've applied these listening skills outside of the classroom. I am an organizer at heart and, um, and also by, by trade outside of school. Um, I'm, I'm often engaged in uh, organizing around political projects and projects of advocacy around social justice and issue-based organizing. And so I know the importance of listening and asking genuine questions of understanding, uh, how important that is to building coalitions and strong lasting relationships and communities. So to hear my students share that makes my heart yeah. so full to bursting. Um, I, I wanted to put in a couple other notes really briefly about how um, the roots of full spectrum listening as it's conceived by essential partners is in narrative therapy. So mm -hmm. the narrative therapy movement around how we talk about our stories, about our past, about experiences of trauma or struggle or suffering, that um, that narrative therapy, those techniques have been adapted by essential partners and now passed on to us so that we can implement them in the classroom. So I love the idea of that coming full circle back to the family where there is often conflict and pain. And so I, I just, that makes me so happy. Um, and well, the other thing and deservedly so, I must say, Eric, because you're the one who brought these techniques and they sound like they've really had an impact and been very powerful and very helpful. Thank you. And, well, I'm a and, conduit. I am a conduit. And, uh, <laughs> that's my goal as a teacher. And I'll also just, can I mention real briefly, I'm sorry, Mary, um, no, that the state has identified these listening and, uh, and interviewing skills as standards that they explicitly describe in their um, civic dispositions for social studies. Yeah. Ex so, excellent. Yeah, that's the state's great. on top of it, and they're really yeah. pushing these skills, and we're happy to find a way to implement them in the classroom because you really, that's as great. a teacher, you realize you, you, you get what you measure, and you yeah. get what you teach. And so right. we've been focusing explicitly and getting results. Um, in answer to your last question, um, I feel like these interviews we've had a chance to have with Gia and Rebecca Traster and uh, Emily Nussbaum and Shira Springer, these are my personal heroes. And so I would say interviewing Rebecca Traster was a highlight of my okay. life, maybe even, because I've been such an <laughs> admirer of her work. <laughs> Um, and so I will say that what this experience has taught me and a lesson that I've been learning throughout my career is that when you put yourself out there and you're willing to ask questions and you're willing to ask people for their time, that if you do it in such a way that connects with them uh, on the grounds of like mutual respect and admiration, that it's amazing what they'll give back, especially if it's an opportunity to talk with young people. So um, I just, I, I'm already kind of dr interviewing my, my dream interviews. You've already right? had your dream interviews. So yeah. that's really great. Excellent. Uh, let's see, Sophie, how about you? Who would your dream interview be? I have two, either Emma Watson or Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, I, I would, I, can I sit in on both? Yeah. <laughs> Lucy, how about you? Um, Dempsey Arsenal is a player on the Boston College lacrosse team. So that'd be really fun to interview her. Excellent. Quinn, how about you? Um, I would interview Tom Brady and I'd ask him why he left the Patriots after being here for like 20 years. Good question. Yeah, everybody will want to know the answer to that. So if you find out, come back, okay? <laughs> Brian, how about you? Um, I'd probably pick somebody on the Bruins um, just because they're an athlete and they work really hard every day. Okay, great. Maya? Um, if I had a chance, I'd like to interview Usain Bolt because he's done so well in like his field of running, and I just yeah. like to know like what his motivation was, like who got him where he is now. I just like think that would be interesting. That would be fascinating to find out, and now you have the skills to 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 get him there too. So, and, and Isla, how about you? I think there are a lot of different people that I could do, but maybe uh, the Swedish environmental environmental activist. Her name is Greta Thunberg, and she's only. 17, so it's really inspiring. Oh, absolutely. Well, if any of you nab any of those interviews, you, you come back on the morning show, all right? Because I'd love to hear about them. <laughs> all right, thank you all um, so much. Um, so, Mary, so I just wanted to pop in and just say, you guys, I've been here the whole time listening to you. Um, I am, uh, I've been awaiting, I did a little damage on my run this morning, so I'm awaiting some x-ray information and MRI information about what I have done to my leg. So I've been here and I just want to say thank you to all of the students for coming. Um, and also thank you for kind of winging it on the social studies elements because we haven't totally uh, solidified their I and we topics, but it sounds like, you know, you guys are clearly able to understand the connection between 
the interview process that we've been doing and what's going to happen with your I and we projects. And I'm just so grateful um, that uh, we have uh, somehow instilled this in them that they know this already. <laughs> um, and I'm just really grateful that you all were able to take the time to share your stories. And I didn't want you to think I was just a picture here in the background and not listening, <laughs> but um, it's just sort of an unusual uh, situation, circumstances for me this morning. So I apologize. Um, but thank you all very much for, for doing this with us this morning. It was really great to hear how much you have grown um, through the program in terms of your thinking and your approach um, to listening and learning. So thank you again. Thank I'm you, so Jennifer. <laughs> well, I, you, you know, you, you deserve, you, you all, I can understand why you would be proud. You all uh, are, are wonderful conduits yourself. I've learned a lot myself uh, about listening and interviewing from just talking to you. And it sounds like a very powerful program. And I'm just thrilled and delighted um, and grateful to you all for being willing to come on the morning show and share your stories with us. So thank you all so much. Um, it's powerful to listen. And it's clear that you've learned that and you're carrying it forward into your relationships, not only with the subjects that you're studying, your profiles, your I and we projects, but also your own lives. So um, Godspeed with that. And thank you all so much for joining us on the morning show. I really appreciate it. All right, take care now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Thank you. I hope we have the chance to talk again on another topic someday. It would be wonderful to have you back, especially if you nail those interviews. <laughs> you betcha. So thanks, everybody. Uh, please join us next week on The Morning Show, 9 a.m. on Channel 9. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.